going forward, I think with this podcast, you know, I had guests on before. I still have guests going from the moon. But a lot of it's going to be more like a diary for me, man. I don't think I was really doing that in the podcast. Like, really just recording their everyday lives, right? And plus giving you maybe some guests in between, which I'm going to start doing. But, um, you know, I've been thinking lately, I had a great conversation for an old friend of mine for 30 years, my, one of my best friends, which he was on the podcast a while back. And um, now we had like a two-hour conversation. I wish I, would have, I wish I would have recorded that for the podcast. And he was just giving me my flowers for, you know, my life, the publisher book. And, you know, I've been getting some great reviews and stuff. And I know people have just been telling me how much they like it so much. And I got to say, I got to do more homework, man. I got to figure out how to get an agency, get an agent, um, that's not the end all be all, right? But you know, these these are professional people who know that book market better than I do. You know, I'm just dabbling it now. And I'm learning. It's going to take me years to learn and to expedite that. You know, I need a team, and if I can get that team to help with that and promotion and awareness and giving it to the right people, then um. Like I said, this expedites things a lot faster. So, um, so it had me thinking, and this is sorry, I went straight to the punch. And that's how I am. I don't like just dragging shit out. But, you know, after writing my life and, and so I'm still promoting it, I still have a long way to promote it still. It's doing great. You know, I'm reading every fucking day. You know, I just finished a book named Chatter. This book. Um, Oakland Dice Dreaming. Another author from Brooklyn. Like right now, it's like a renaissance coming out in New York. Like a lot of authors from Brooklyn. Um, you know, Hispanic authors, whether it's Dominican, Puerto Rican, even Ecuadorian or authors as well. Um, it's great to see that that my generation's coming out and really writing and um putting stuff out there for us, which we which growing up I didn't have that. I didn't have Hispanic writers I can really go to. Um and if I did they were so like kind of far off, you know, it was really kinda of, like so distant. Um but to have these amazing authors and so far I'm in few pages into this book and it's amazing and you know, that leads me to talk about my book that i've been writing for fucking eight to ten years now brooklyn love and you know i'm i'm, I'm pretty deep into it you know, like you know 28 chapters it's like forty five thousand words and it's tough it's tough picking up a book from X amount of years ago. It's tough to pick it up and and get that same feeling. Um, I got to say it. I mean, I mean, my goal this year is to finish Brooklyn Love and to get it out there. But I want to do it justice at the same time, right? So, you know, I want to make sure I give it what I'm supposed to be giving it. And uh, I guess I get in my own head, you know, feeling that since I, I've let the book sit for so long, I'm actually having to reread the book again. <laughs> the very book I wrote uh, to make sure I'm not <laughs> rewriting shit that I already wrote in the beginning of the book. You know what I'm saying? And then I'm finding a lot of errors. Plus, since I wrote it like almost eight years to a decade ago, I'm finding some some things that's like I have to change because the timing, you know, a decade ago, um, you know, things weren't around, right? So um, I having to kind of update it uh, because if I start writing the back half of the book now, from what I know now from a decade ago, I've grown in my writing. I've also experienced new things. So the book is going to go to a weird 
type of pattern where it has a decade ago of me writing to, to now. So that's the difficulty I'm running into right now. I don't want to start the book over. As I'm, as I'm rereading it, it's actually a really good book. I've, I've done an actually really good job. Um, that's not to be, you know, narcissistic. But you got to know which, when you're good at something. And uh, I wrote a really strong story. Um, I was even contemplating putting this out as a short story. Um, but my wife, many years, has been pushing me to put this out as a full novel. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm not sure how long it's going to be. I'm just going to continue to write it. And then from there, let the editors kind of help and, and make it make sense of a particular length. But um, yeah, man, my conversation with Danny was great, man. Like, you know, he also writes poetry as well. And uh, just talking about how it's therapeutic for him. Um, after he writes a poem, you know, he sits for a few days thinking about it and thinking about the emotion that comes with that poem. And I think that's fantastic. I think that's that's fucking great, man. Like, I read my poems, you know, I dwell on them as well. And because it's coming from a raw place. It's coming from a place that I never really thought I, I would put myself in emotionally. And lately, ever since I wrote my life, I've been putting my emotions more on display and also checking some emotions as well, you know. Um, and understanding where the anger is coming from, where the sadness is coming from, you know, because it's just not one emotion, it's many emotions. So, um, excuse me. Oh, sorry, I'm sick. But, um, what I want to do, which I found out a couple of these writers have done, is that they actually got some grants. And the grants have allowed them to rewrite the book. And I've been doing some research for 2022 since we know we just started. I'm hoping I can possibly get a grant, maybe even submit my life to it, or what I have um, with a partial manuscript for Brooklyn Love, um, and see what they think, and see if I get picked up. Um, that'd be fantastic. You know what I'm saying? Like, that'd be really dope. You know, authors are unique breed. You know, to finish a book is not easy. It took me several months to do with my life. That's why I'm giving a whole year to finish Broken Love, but I know I don't have a year. You no, know, I got to try to get it done by June or July. Then it has to go through the other process of editing. So the story has to come out. Get the first manuscript rough draft out. And then um, commence to rewriting. It's a lot. It's an everyday task. You know, so if I can get a grant. If I can get a grant or a couple of grants to add up to maybe 60, 65,000. Um, I'll be okay with that. I'll be, I'll be okay. That would definitely pay the bills. That would definitely pay the bills. So, um, that's what I'm gonna go for. I'm sorry if I sound so like like confused right now because I'm actually talking to you guys while I'm just discovering these things. So I don't have much detail as where to apply to right now. You know, I found some stuff online on my phone. <laughs> Um, there's this one place that's offering, you know, up to fifty thousand dollars for nonfiction and fiction works, and um, I'm gonna try to go for that. Fifty grand, that would that would definitely be okay. Um. Remember, it's up to so it could be. 10 grand. But any type of money, money I can make so I can just put aside so I can 
write write this book and don't pay my bills. Important. I'm gonna try to leave a legacy for my family. I'm gonna try, you know, definitely get on this writing and 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 make it a thing to where I can make a living off of it. But my books could could generate me hundreds of thousands of dollars. You know, less than like Stephen King, you know, the big authors, you know, Anne Rice, she's gone to, um, Dean Koontz, which I actually love Dean Koontz a lot. He, has, he writes furiously, just like Stephen King, I'm not sure how they freaking do it. But then it grew to put out so many books a year, it's insane. Um, they're just straight hammering books out, but again, that's your craft, that's what you do. And that's all you do is write. Then yeah, you're gonna have one or two books. You're gonna get that cadence to put stuff out, and that's what I want. I want to not take a year to write a book. I want to take a couple months to write a book. I want to get that story in, get it out, you know, and give it the love it needs every single day. You know, my book took on eight years, almost a decade of time to complete because of the fact that I let everyday life get in my way. I wasn't confident about my writing. And that's it. You know, I was so busy focused on validation from other people. And when, you, when you're a writer and you try to give your stuff to people who don't read, that's a problem. Because they're not going to get, if they don't read, you know what I'm saying? So they're not going to get the fuck you're coming from. And, you know, you might get that, oh, yeah, it's good, it's good, it's good. Like, to me, good is bad. Saying that it's good, it's good, it's good. It means, okay, well, I need to work on some shit. What can I work on? They're not articulate enough to explain to you what you need to work on. Because, again, you're giving your work to the wrong people. So, that being said, even with the fifth grand, what am I taking a creative writing course? You know, to go dive deeper into um, writing. You know what I'm saying? So, what am I doing that going to creative writing school? This is doing a course for a couple of weeks. And I really want to give my book the life it deserves. You know what I'm saying? Um, I also don't, don't want to mess with my style. Um, but it's a, uh, the book I'm writing is an urban love story. From a man's perspective. You know, most romances are written by women. So this was written you know, by a man from a man's perspective. So my wife hates um, one of the main characters. She she hates her. Um, she loves to hate her. She said, but that's what I want. I want someone. I want. I want my book to evoke emotions to where people are like, oh my god, I hate this person. And uh, I'm sorry, I'm just ranting right now. I'm just so all over the place. Very excited that I found about this. Like I said, this is. The second time, the first time, not that I put it away, but to me, I didn't act on it. I'm not sure why. Why well, didn't fucking do some research right away? And I, and I read the fucking book and she said it herself. Um, but um, I also want to help other authors too, right? I want to help other the artists and writers get themselves out there as much as possible. If I can do that with this podcast, that'd be great. So I'm going to start, you know asking people they want to come on. Asking authors they want to hit on, you know, come on the podcast and speak about their book. And um yeah, you know, that also gives me time to to offer my book, right? So it's the same thing with people people if I'm starting to interview these these authors that people really don't get to know, then that'd be dope because authors really don't get played like that. You know, so I'm sure there's other podcasts like that that I might not know of that I'm gonna probably need to research too. But I want to really definitely get down and dirty with you know minority writers, whether they're Asian, or Hispanic, you know, um, black, you know, uh, writers, you know, just um, Latinos, you know, and just it's all over the, the gambit of writers and speaking to them about. You know, and Oprah does her thing. She speaks to all types of writers. I want to speak to all types of writers as well. But I definitely want to give minorities that kind of 
especially younger authors, just coming out authors, that platform where they can go back and say, yo, check me out here and then give them that type of content they can reuse for themselves. I think that'd be a dope idea, um, which I've kind of done in the past with the podcast already, right? I give those people and whether they use it to better their their following or the advancement of whatever they were doing, that's up to them. But it's always going to be out there. So that means I have to read a lot of fucking books because I'm not going to. And the problem with me is I read slow. Yeah, this book right here is like 400 freaking pages. And uh, my book may be this long. Um, damn, I can't get this right. My book may be this long. Um, just because the directory is going right now. And uh, it's a good book so far. And um, I'm really bad at taking notes. So I'm going to have to learn how to take notes and, and, and ask about. But then again, it may, may me, it may make me a better reader because of the comprehending piece, right? So yeah, this code is kicking my ass. But um, yeah, man, we we're going to do some new things this year for that. So man, I'm all over this place in the podcast. This is the wackest podcast I've probably ever done. And I'm sorry for you guys. I really am. So let's just kind of get back to this. So one of the grants, no, oh, man, I just read this for now. It's just for short stories, grants for short stories. I might send this to my son. My son's writing a bunch of short stories. So this is called uh, uh, John Simon Guggenheim Memorial Foundation. And it's for short stories up to $50,000 each. I didn't even read that. Uh, a lot of children's book. Also, they have grants for nonfiction. Right? The country needs fiction and nonfiction writers, right? So you need to make sure that they have, you know, new historians, people from different perspectives, people digging up new shit. So it's, it's a great thing as well. So not just just for fiction, but it's also for nonfiction as well. So if you thought about writing a book and you don't know where to start, what I would say, take a class, right? Um. Uh, you can go online, you can go to Google, Google how to write a book or go to YouTube. YouTube will show you. Um, TikTok as well, but TikTok is a little short, but you know, YouTube will probably give you more of a tutorial. Um, you can go to Skillshare, even Coursera and, you know, purchase a course and go through, you know, the creative writing process. You can go to your local college. You know, local community college. I'm sure there's a like a, like a certificate program or a course you can take for creative writing. You don't have to go to freaking university to be a creative writer. So I would say um that is bite the shit on my lip. Here it is bleeding a little bit. I would say definitely do that. Um I've been writing since I was thirteen, so um we well, yeah, also have the National Endowment for the Arts Literature Fellowships. This provides uh, $25,000 to eligible uh, publisher writers in poetry, creative fiction, and nonfiction prose. I'm a fly for that. I just wrote a poetry book. So, eligible published writers. I'm a published writer. I have a couple books on Amazon that I've published already. So again, I'm going to try to see what I can do and go after a few of these grants and uh, put something out. And, uh, you know, and some are lower, like some like a thousand dollars here and there, but things add up when you guys apply for multiple of them, if I can get up to 50, $60,000, I'd be fine with that for the year. That would really give me enough time to really just sit home and, and, and write even maybe even go someplace and write even when I had to you know the best time to write is like right now when no one's in the house I was at work and kids are in school I'm here sick at home by myself and this is like the kind of the best time I get stuff done when I know that there's pressure because the kids are coming back soon in life 
that's when I, I, I went my best. Um, you know, and then just also just researching and when I write, especially with this book, I had to make a playlist, to make an R&B playlist to get in that kind of mood. You know, talking about love. So, but I'm not going to hold you guys up anymore because I really don't have much to say. I just want to say that I want to get on here and just give you guys something. Um, and let you guys know what I'm working on. And I promise next podcast will be more, a lot better than me just ranting. If you like this podcast like this, then let me know. I, I can rant all fucking day if you like. It's not a problem. But I'm going to have to let you go because I'm going to have to go ahead and research this stuff and see if I can fill out some applications and go from there with it. So I really can't wait to see what happens, the kind of response I get. And uh, I do want to write another poetry book too. And I am. I'm actually writing poetry now every day still. And uh, I do better when I have a theme so I can know what. Uh, right now, you know, I've been writing kind of freehandedly, just random poems about love or situations, what I see, but I'm going to actually make a, a theme to focus on. And we're just trying to get more stuff out of me that way. Um, that's how my life was created, and uh, the poetry that came out of it was dope. So. Um, I'm going to do more poetry readings, so you can follow me on, on TikTok for that, and also on IG. And um, look out, I'm going to start asking these authors to come on, and let's start, like, you know, um, interviewing them. Um, I got to do my job as far as reading the book and asking some questions about it. And let's see what happens with that. Maybe I just may have him on and say, you know what, plug your book, but let's have fun. Let's get to know you and leave it for like the Oprahs of the world to really talk about the book itself. I don't know. I don't know. You guys tell me what you think. Put your comments below. Uh, hit me up. Hit me up in IG. Let me know what you think. And uh, we'll go from there with the folks. You guys have been a blast. Stay right. Stay tight.